Listen to the vibes hosted by Coyote Night. Listen in for some positivity and good times. The views and opinions of our guests may not necessarily reflect those of the host or the Vibes Broadcast Network. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome everyone to Listen to the Vibes. I have here Miss Carlana Stone, who I've been able to get to know a little better the last couple of weeks, and she is so awesome. And um, you are an entertainment specialist. Is that what is that what your description I, says? I love that title. That's great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, an entertainment specialist. Yeah, I I, I operate on any medium. <laughs> <laughs> well, we want to get to know you. You know, you know well, as personal as you can get, and uh, and also what exactly it is a entertainment specialist does. So, where are you from? You know, where did you grow up? All that good stuff. All that good stuff, huh? Well, let's start by going back to my roots, my precious, precious roots. <laughs> <laughs> I was born and bred in Shreveport, Louisiana. Yeehaw! Yeehaw! <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was born and raised there, and uh, I've got two older sisters and a mom and dad who are just precious to me, uh, and a whole community. Uh, so Shreveport, I, I, I went to grade school um with uh I, I went to grade school at saint john birchman's uh catholic school and it's so funny because it's uh my daddy was a methodist minister growing up so my whole life was kind of a, a paradox <laughs> you know where religion kind of came in and it was just my daddy was like this guy with the guitar making religion fun and then there was the order of the catholic school church you know and um so Straddling that line all my life has kind of been uh, where I really rest. <laughs> um, so yeah, no, but I um, I graduated from high school in 1986. Prior to that, my junior year in high school, though, um, you know, I uh, I guess I should go back. I mean, I, I grew up out in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and I grew up on horses. My mom had black Labrador retrievers and she ran in retriever trials all over the country and um, hands in the dirt, really just cool, earthy kind of people. I mean, I had a, a three-wheeler ATC 70 that I used to, we lived on 250 acres out in the, you know, out in the boondocks is what we mm -hmm. called it, uh, outside of the Shreveport city limits. So outside the city limits down there, it's like, you know, you're off the grid. Uh, but yeah, I had these little ATC 70 that, that I, oh my God, we flipped that thing so many times. I mean, it was so small, you know, we'd go up and down ditches and just turn it over, but we just made so many great memories. I mean, we used to pull the zip sled behind the Volkswagen thing that we had out there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how I learned to drive shift, you know, shift, uh, a, a gear shift was uh, uh, on that Volkswagen thing. Oh my God, those are fun, fun days. And um, yeah, so I was a gymnast. Uh, my, my older sister, Karen, uh, was a gymnast before I was. And I always like admired her. I was like, oh my God, you know, she, I just wanted to be my sister, Karen. You know, she was so talented. And I mean, uh, I followed in her footsteps uh, with, with regards to gymnastics and um, lived for being on display, you know, right. that was my sweet spot. I became a cheerleader, a gymnast, you know, I competed all over the South. Um, you know, my dad used to drive us to uh, gym, uh, to uh, uh, the, what do you call it? The, um, the state championships and the regionals and everything. My dad used to drive a bunch of gymnasts in the back of the, uh, we had a Natasca motor home. Oh, anyway. <laughs> Those days, those days, but yeah, um, yeah, so I was uh, involved in every single sport known man, and uh, like I said, I, I, I lived to be on display, that was, um, and I was in a car accident my junior year uh, in high school, uh, at the very end of my junior year in high school, and 
in the blink of an eye, went from this glorified cheerleader and paraplegic to, or excuse me, what did I say? Uh, this, <laughs> yeah, see how quickly I say that. This cheerleader and gymnast to paraplegic overnight. Um, that's interesting. Um, Freudian slips always kind of dive into those. Um, anyway, so <laughs> I, um, yeah, it was a, um, it's shocking. You know, I mean, I can remember my first time out um in public right. <laughs> my family drove up to the valet and it was literally my first time out of the rehab after three months of learning to live in a wheelchair and i had a turtle shell brace on and my uh my my dad pulls up to the valet and my whole family's inside of the car and it is like oh my god we are a three ring circus so, I mean, I can see it right now. We pulled up and my dad opens all the, the doors on this, either side of the road and everyone jumps out of the car and I'm sitting in there in the car still. My dad announces, hey, you got a wheelchair in the truck. We'll be right out of your way. But he's blocking all three lanes. And I can see out of the corner of my eye all the people lining up behind the valet stand. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, man. And so I've got this turtle shell brace on. I'm kind of like teeter tottering, you know, even in the car and I've got to make it from the car seat onto the wheelchair. And, um, I, I've got a board that I had to navigate. That board was like my new balance beam, if you will. But I'm like halfway across that board telling myself, don't look up, don't look up, don't look up. But you could feel, you know, that energy, you can feel somebody's staring at you. <laughs> Halfway across that board, I looked up and I met this woman's gaze. And for the first time in my life, I had engendered a look of pity. And that was the most paralyzing moment of my life. Uh, the, the physical aspects of the paralysis, <laughs> It's like, just, just wipe that off. That, that, that's the easy part. Um, yeah, and I, I, I set out on a course to, to disprove that pity, that, 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 oh my God. You know, I, uh, I, I set out to, to disprove it. Like I said, I, I pay no attention to boundaries became, you know, my life's mantra. And uh, I can't walk, but I can fly. <laughs> Literally learned to fly an airplane in spite of being a paraplegic. I jumped out of a few of them too. Um, and uh, I'm still here to talk about it. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I had addressed all these, all these barriers outside of myself, all these stereotypes, all of these, you know, stigmas and biases and all this kind of stuff. I don't know, just a... I mean, I, I, I even went so far as to, you know, denial and denial ain't just a river in Egypt, <laughs> you know, <laughs> denial became like a, um, a survival mechanism for me, you know, I don't, you know, everybody, however, thought that I put it all out there, but I had a safe veneer. I hid behind other people's stories. <laughs> mm. I became a producer in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, for the last 20 years, producing television, telling people stories. I, I, I got into that line of work through going down to Miami where I had gone through some rehabilitation and uh, became a, was, was, was offered just an opportunity that fell in my lab. I was offered an opportunity to become a reporter uh, for an ABC affiliate. I was down there hosting a fundraiser for a, a nonprofit organization I, we had started up called Project MetaShare. We were working to rebuild a health infrastructure in Haiti. Mm -hmm. And I was, uh, and so uh, that's what I did right out of college, you know, 30 some years ago. And then I became this uh, reporter um, on an ABC affiliate, first wheelchair wielding reporter, you know, I was the rolling rookie. Um, the wheelchair really became this catalyst uh, for conversation. I think people can see themselves in me. 
um, they see something, they see the chair that's like a symbol of, hey man, I've been tested, but I don't have victim, you know, stamped all over my head. Um, but, but you can tell I've been, I've, I've been somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been there so many times, self-induced, you know, face in the pavement falls, um, you know, throughout my life. But those are the times where, for me that I've learned the most about life. And myself, you know, or, you know, those, uh, the deep, dark, in the pit <laughs> of, of our lives, you know, and, uh, but I, I, um, I got so good at, 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 at well, the, the walls that I built around me were so sturdy. Mm. that uh, I didn't have to really reinforce them. It just became my new normal. It was like, this is okay. This is part of my survival kind of thing, the denial, if you will. And I even like so much as to going back to that, that look, looking yeah. into that woman's eyes when I was in the valet. You know, when, when I say that I was more paralyzed in that moment than I've ever been, it was because I didn't, I was less than. I was apart from. Um, and that impression scarred me um, to the point where I didn't realize until this year, <laughs> this is the lockdown, and really going inside and back around and learning, like I had shared with you about Sky, this breath and meditation that I've been doing. Mm -hmm. And it has truly helped me, um, you know, the, the, the breath is about connecting the mind with the heart and what happens when we do that it's we settle in and our fear subsides and it's a magical place but we go straight to the root and so I've been able to access the root of what truly paralyzed me and it was the fact that that look that gaze that woman's that woman's gaze at that ballet was a, a reflection of how I saw myself. Yeah. And my, the, the next 37 years have been greatly impacted by that limited belief in self. Um, yet I, I have, in spite of it all, I can't walk, but I can still fly. But this is a whole new way of, of, uh, of living. Um, and it's, it's kind of taking the blinders off and settling in and going, Hey man, we all are here together. And we, there is, there is something palpable about the, <clears throat> the human experience because it's a, it's a, you know, the universality of human emotion. And so, you know, fears divide us and I'm realizing how much my own biases, the, the, the limitations, the, the way in which I viewed myself, you know, circa 1985, Shreveport, Louisiana, you know, forget the curb cuts and all that, or the lack of curb cuts and all that kind of stuff as far as access, but you no, know, anybody in a wheelchair, they're like that, you know, they're either hundreds of years old and, you know, on their way out or they're shut out. They ain't good enough. They don't, mm -hmm. they're not one of us. Um, different than, apart from, less than. And uh, it's, it's amazing how much we accept as truths as children. I mean, they didn't have to like 16, you know? Um, that uh, I just, I am excited <laughs> about um, having discovered something like is fundamental as breath and how to breathe and um, being able to share it with, with people and give, give people like myself a, a roadmap 
um, with, 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 to, to ignite an internal, you know, superpower that's ours at will. And um, I've learned just so much through being able to sit with myself and, and um, I've gone to those uncomfortable places and it's like, you know, when I start talking about it and I connect with people like you who are doing the same thing, you know, but in your own language, you know, and we're talking about the connection between the paranormal the stuff that we don't see and the stuff that we see and then our illusionary obstacles that we place in our paths. I'm the guiltiest person on the planet. Yeah. You know, well, and it colors how, yeah. I, I never really understood what equality really meant until I had to actually be in a chair. And the thing that people don't understand what being equal means is don't treat me better just because I'm in a wheelchair or I have, you know, a disability. Don't, right. don't, don't, don't treat me better and don't treat me worse. You know, I want you to recognize that I'm here and see, I am a human being, but don't give me a pass for being an a-hole or whatever, just because I'm in a chair. Hold you know? me accountable. Thank you. That's exactly yes. what I'm trying to say. And yes. People do not understand. That's everything. That. No, no, no. Accountability is everything. And it's that simple. It's like, hey, man, I screwed up. I'll do better. You know? Um, mm -hmm. So I, I, over the last, you know, whatever, I've, as I've taken this deep dive, I came across a quote that said, an apology without change is just manipulation. There you go. Isn't that strong? That's like, right. What? It's true though, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's, uh, I mean, we also, you know, one of the, one of the, one of the lessons, oh God, one of the rich, rich, rich lessons of, of learning in this breath work and with the community is, is one of the five tenets, the five keys is, is, uh, do not see intent behind other people's actions. Excuse me. Do not see intent behind other people's mistakes. Okay. Yeah. That yeah. Sense. Right. That because you know, it's it's really interesting when we when we look when we examine it, um, because so much of what happens is it is it just lives in our minds, and then that becomes our reality. Mm -hmm. Um, it's amazing what we can do when we kind of get to the root of some of the things that are dividing us. And it's just, you know, sometimes diving right to the center, to the core, to the pit is where it has to, to go. I mean, there's a, I mean, hello, look at it, look at it right now. There's so much unrest and everything, but you know, what's so awesome is that, man, it's like, we've been like the snow globe kind of thing, you know, <laughs> and it's like now it's all settling but you know it's like it's more it, it, it's not like a it turn that snow globe upside down or something because it's almost as though um we're starting anew um you know we really have an opportunity to level the playing field Mm -hmm. you know, where yeah. we haven't before, you know, and, and, and technology is our friend along the way. But storytelling, sharing our stories, that's the oldest, you know, way to teach people, to, to connect, to, to, you know, and exchanging our stories, we see ourselves, we see pieces of ourselves. And, and, and that's like that mirror neuron therapy that works you know you, you, you know it's it, it's it's like it seriously is this thing that that mutual glance that reveals this shared humanity that oh and it releases oxytocin in our systems it, it, it it's a feel good it, it it's like oh I know you. And it's like, I think the Muppets are, you know, the Fraggle Rock or something. I mean, it, it, it is seriously so <laughs> fundamentally easy. And um, it's like, that's why kids just have the right idea, man. Kids ask questions and kids talk and kids don't. Yeah. Yeah. 
They're and honest. We take it in our own way. Kids are honest. Yes, yes, yes. Do you ever <laughs> listen to the Abbott Brothers? What's the name of the song? Um, there's a the the Abbott Brothers. They're phenomenal. They're from like a one of the Carolinas, but they're phenomenal. They're just these great musicians. And one of their songs is says, uh, "There's no difference between." truth it, it, it's like uh oh my god it's such a strong statement I, I i can't recall it right now but it's uh it's about the where there's you know there there's the, it, it's just the truth is very clean and simple you know and and anything other than that is just an untruth you know and and, and i mean it, it's i can't think of the name of the song or the words but that's what it says to me you know and it's like um when we just kind of settle into that, that, that truth, I don't know. It's a, it's a very simple way to a future that includes all of us. And it's a, but, but it's a, it, it, it involves a way of thinking that is new to us because, you know, we all have uh, tempered lenses, you know, I mean, just, just in the way that I, I've got my own personal biases, you know, the way I look at myself that I've had to, you know, be, that I've only begun to deconstruct, but oh my God, you know, the, the, the freedom of liberation that comes as a result of that is just insane. It's like this uncaged, you know, feeling and you want to keep, but you want to bring everybody along because it is such a, um, it is such a magical place to be when you're not running from people, but you're running to them, you know, yes. you're, 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 And that's just, a, yeah. Um, constantly learning and constantly growing. Yeah. And I don't care how old you are until the day you die. You, you constantly have to learn something new and you have to constantly grow. Yeah. Or, or you just, you don't exist anymore. Well, that's yeah, the way I look at complacency. it. Complacency. Yeah. We become complacent and we become indifferent and just, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, we got one life to live. Let's live it, you know, and, right. and let's figure it out together, you know, and how to do this, navigate this crazy unknown, you know, but, it, but, but, you know, we can sit here and point finger and, you know, all that kind of stuff and make a bunch of noise and we can, we can begin doing things about it. We can begin talking about it and like making it like more of our norm, you know, to have an open discussion about, okay, you know, yeah, let's, let's, let's make, you know what I mean? And, and that's what you're doing. And it's really cool. I celebrate that you're doing that. And I thank you um, that you're taking the initiative to get out there and start having these conversations. And I think um, I love that, that um, you, in spite of the tornado that I bring along, <laughs> you welcome that. You welcome the tornado in me. You yeah. don't try to... Uh, I appreciate you really, uh, we talked about it before you, this morning, you said, uh, you know, we were, I, well, I was just telling you about what a gift you have of meeting people where they are. And that is, uh, that is truly a gift. Well, you know, something that I've learned, people just want to be heard. You know? Yeah. And nobody likes to be stifled. You know, if, if people would just take the time to listen to what somebody else has to say and actually listen, mm -hmm. not just, you know, go in one ear and out the other, actually sit down and listen. That's that's one thing I can see wrong with our country at this very moment is people don't want to sit down and talk. Now, everybody's quick to point a finger, but you know what they say. You got one finger pointing at somebody else. You got three more pointing back at you. <laughs> Did I ever tell you that story about the put down the magnify? I, I um I went to a, uh, a, a an Al Anon class um fifteen years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I, my uh, my ex husband uh, went to treatment, and I went to an, my first Al Anon meeting. We were sitting around with about fifty ladies. Um, and John would be fine with me telling the story. Um, just FYI, I wouldn't throw him under the bus like that. 
Um, so he, uh, you know, I go to this meeting, 50 ladies sitting in a circle and they're all like, oh, and they each go around that. We go around the circle and they get to me and they're like, oh, you get two minutes because this is your first time or maybe five minutes, whatever, way too long. But anyway, you know, I'm, I'm telling them, oh yeah, my husband had this and then I pointed out, uh, you know, it, it was just like, he did this to me, he did this to me, and oh my God, you know, and, and this is what really pierced my heart and soul because it hit me at my core and, you know, I won't go into some of those specifics. And, but it was, it was piercing, um, even for me, and I was like the one sharing the story, but the ladies would go back around after I'm done, you know, just talking about all the different things he had done to me. Mm -hmm. And all these ladies were like, you're not, you know, you're not alone anymore. And we understand you, we've been there. And, and, and there's one woman said, excuse me, I, I think it's time you put down the magnifying glass and pick up a mirror. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and and I remember just like oh my god like my face is probably getting hot right now like red um I can feel it getting hot because her words stung because they were true mm -hmm. and you know I think when we're pointing the finger and we're screaming the loudest I know that I am when, when I'm doing that Man, it just means pick up a mirror, Carlana, and just dive in because you're going to keep doing that. And it's like, oh, my God. And I didn't realize how much I do that. Trying to do, you know, mm -hmm. fix everything outside of me. And it's not. You really have to look within. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, what are uh, you doing to solve the problem? That's the question you have to ask. What am I doing to solve this problem? Right. What am I doing to contribute to this problem? Right. And, and, and in that vein, what am I doing to, you know, to contribute to this problem or solve the problem? And so that's where the, you know, the learning how to breathe, learning sky breath, this science-based breathing that was something I've never learned. That, it, it, learning how to breathe is a fundamental step that um, I missed. You know, I didn't skip it. I've skipped a lot of steps. You know, I, trust you me, there, there, there are all kinds of steps that I have skipped along the way. Learning how to breathe is not one of them because it was never put in front of me. We don't have a paradigm in place that integrates the very fundamental how to breathe into our routines, the importance of self-care, because you know what? You know how many kids don't get that at home? You know, who don't get that? You talk about nourishment and we're talking about feeding all these kids that are, you know, bless their hearts. I mean, they, you know, they need food and nourishment as well, but it's like, Learning how to breathe is such a fundamental, teaching a child how to regulate his emotions, mm -hmm. it, it helps him, I mean, it's like, oh my God, right? Being able to be on that playground and when you're frightened or, you know, whether you're hiding in a closet or, you know what I mean? I, I just think of like, just, oh my God, I wish that uh, I had had you know, that then, but I'm so happy I have it now and I'm excited to do something about it because I think that it is a way when we talk about, you know, when, when I'm resurrecting my nonprofit organization, the courage community, mm -hmm. and, um, you know, we're talking about this new user interface that makes the whole digital experience accessible to any user, regardless of ability, right? And so we've got technologies that are gaze-based and we've got some adaptive containers that speak all these different languages to neurological disabilities, whether you're talking autism or a physical paralysis that, 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 uh, that, that where they don't have any, you know, use of their limbs. Um, it, it's so, but the, um, the, the whole concept behind it has been a level playing field, a place of inclusion, a place where we all belong, where we are all seeing eye to eye 
And so, you know, you think, oh, well, we can't realize that in this world today. Because, you know, I mean, look at all the obstacles. Look at the brick and mortar obstacles that divide us, you know. And it's like, that's chunk change, man. That, that, that's easy <laughs> stuff, you know. I mean, those are the easy obstacles get, to get over. You know what? There may be a wall there, but together we can put a ladder up on that wall and climb over the other side. I love that. I love that. Yes. Oh. Well, no, I love that. I love that because I love the the play of the every rung on that ladder means something. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and working together, one person holds the ladder and the other, you know what I mean? There's if, a, if it takes two people to put that ladder up there, you have to cooperate in order to get over it. So if just one person is doing it, it's going to be very, very difficult. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, speaking of quotes, I read another quote somewhere that said, you know, when you find people who regulate you well, keep them close or something like that, you know? And it's like, it's so true and it's so easy, but for some reason, um, we don't put enough stock in relationships. You know, relationships are a biological process as potent as any pill or surgical procedure. That is a fact. Um, our limbic systems are designed to belong. We are interconnected. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's, we are so conditioned to living in our differences dividing us and, and kind of like, like <laughs> celebrating our uniqueness to a fault where we're just precipitating, you know, the divide mm -hmm. um, through, you know, that was one of the things with the, the, the wheelchair community um, because of where my own perspective started. You know, I'm, I'm realizing in retrospect if I'm going to be completely honest here, how much I have resisted um, being a part of the community, the disabled, the, the specifically spinal cord injured uh, community. Um, because of the way, you know, I thought it, it, it uh, magnified what I was already feeling apart from different than and oh my god if there's two of us or three of us holy shit you know <laughs> it's like um it just reinforced that whole thing and um that's me i'm one of us you know and so i uh i've had to really re-examine how i see myself and my paralysis and I'll tell you something I'll tell you something again something very personal but um you know after I was paralyzed um I was 16 you know my sisters were you know we're six years apart you know they're they're uh, uh, five and six and a half years apart so um they're they're just you know 18 months apart at Karen and Mitzi and um so they were just out of college, I guess, you know, at the time I was, got it, was injured. <clears throat> but, you know, it, it, it takes a toll on a family, you can imagine. Yeah. And um, I carried a lot of that guilt and shame around with me. Talk about paralysis, you know, and, and, and just reinforcing negative self-talk. And we, we build neural pathways that are based on our routines and the, 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 the conversations we have with ourselves. And, and, uh, yeah. Um, you know, this is the way you have to look at it. And I'm sure you've already discovered this, but, you know, we, you and I, we didn't even know it when I, when I reached out to you, we didn't even know we were both, you know, in wheelchair. But um, I always feel this guilt. I carry this guilt around that, you know, I don't want to be a burden on everybody. Yeah. But my wife looked at me, she goes, wouldn't you help me if the situation was turned around the other way? And I'm like, well, yeah. She goes, well, why won't you let me? I'm like, oh, wow. I didn't think of it that way. But we're so right. used to, you know, we weren't born in wheelchairs. We had so much independence for so long 
And then when you're forced to have to rely on other people to help you with things, that's, that's it's kind of a hard pill to swallow. Asking but, for help is about the hardest thing I've ever had to do. But you, I mean, I if you're willing really to do it for, for somebody help. else, shouldn't you allow people to do that for you? Well, but, but what it comes down to when you get to the pit of it, when you get to the root of it, mm -hmm. you know, is, is you got to value what you're asking. You know, if you're asking for help, you got to value what you're asking for help for. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and just valuing self is, is really a big thing. Um, you know, and I, I, I think, when, well, first of all, you, you know, one of the things that I'm doing is helping to reframe in my mind. It's like the, the fact that, especially with acquired disabilities, we learn how to solve for problems outside of the norm. We're a hell of a valuable asset right now when we are all marooned on the islands of doubt and going, what next? What? Another year? What? 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 <laughs> you know, and like this disconnect. Well, you know, because there's a disconnect and there is something longing in our systems that we're, that's not being fed, but there is a way to engage like what we're doing right now when we get to the heart of the story. You know what I mean? And when we exchange something personal and I'll tell you, um, something I've gone back to time and time and time and time again, but I've only em fully embraced uh, this year. Um, and that is about a year after my accident, my sister went to go see a psychic. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and she took a picture, you know, the psychic had given her, you know, some, uh, a list or whatever she had to, to bring. And she said, bring pictures of, you know, your loved ones or whatever. And so she gets in there and she's asking her, you know, questions and she's sharing pictures. And so they get to mine and, and she gives her the picture. And it was a picture of me standing in a mini skirt next to a tree, but I'm standing um, next to a friend of mine from high school. And, you know, um, but the, the uh, psychic asked her, is your sister in some way debilitated? And Mitzi said that it was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh uh, yeah. You know, like how does she know this kind of thing? And she's like, yeah, she was paralyzed in a car accident. And she said, well, you understand that that, that had to happen because your sister possesses a soul that is so large, it cannot be, you know, that, that her physical body had to in some way be compromised so the light could actually reach its capacity, you know, that oh, it wow. could actually, um, and that is, um, you know, when I, when I look back at my life and I think of all of the, the, challenges um and the victories the victories were always rooted in the darkest of times <laughs> you know, it's like then and it just like that burst of light that happens that um it's just it, it's 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 just an, a, a reawakening mm. of the way I see myself and my place and the world and my place in it, you know? And I believe that we're all vessels of light, you know? And that, that I just want to be here. You know, I, I met this woman when I first moved to Austin. I met her in the grocery store at the HEB over on 41st and uh, Red River, right? Okay. Um, and uh, over by the Crystal store. By the rock store, uh, the, the crystal shop. Yeah. Okay. So, um, big holler out to the rock store, man. That's yeah, a, that's right. Gem of a place. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I've met some people for that. Yeah. But I'll pump. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Pretty cheesy. Um, no, but I, uh, when I first moved to Austin, I was grocery shopping in the HEB, and I, 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 I know exactly where I was. This I was at the corner of this um, uh, of the freezer section, and um, 
you know, this woman was there. We, we met right there at the corner of the aisle. And it was like, whoa, whoa, you know, we, we just saw each other. And I was like, hi. And she was, hi. And I'm like, how are you? And she's like, I'm just fine. How are you? And, and I said, well, well, oh my God. I, I said, you know what? You were just this beautiful light. I mean, she was just like this like you plugged her in like a Christmas light. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like the star when you put it on top of the tree and you plug it in, it's like, psh. she was just like this, ah! it was like, it was palpable. You know what I mean? I was like, what is your story? And she has, I, I, I said, yeah, what is your story? And she goes, I'm just here to spread joy. And I mean, she ended it there. Wow. And I was like, oh my God. And she became a dear, dear friend of mine. Shannon Heyman is her name. And I love her. And she's like 70, maybe 70 years old. Her husband just passed away. You know, he's been really sick over the last several years um, uh, with cancer. And so oh, she's, um, yeah, it's, it's been this set. So, but she's just been this rich, rich resource for me. Um, and, but, you know, I mean, and it's a great reminder. Because it's like when I when I just recall that moment, it's like, bam, you know, it's like, oh my God, I'm just filled with light, just the memory, you know, and that is we can we can have that kind of impact on somebody or we can leave a different kind of impression. You know, and uh it's a, it's a choice, I think, you know, but it's a lot easier when you just kinda be a beacon of light in this darkness. Carlana, I, I hate to tell you this, but our time is running out. And I know you, I know you have an appointment. I was just beginning, baby. I know. You know what? We can pick this up again and have a part two to this. Part two. Absolutely, did. man. Yeah. Because you are fascinating, and I'm sure people are really enjoying this conversation. So we won't say this is the end. We'll just say till the next time. Yep, to be continued. To be continued. Yeah. So, how about this journey, baby? Let's, let's do that. We will schedule that. And uh, you're on. Thank you're you. on. We can bring some fun people to the party too. Maybe we can. We can really have fun with this. Well, of course, that's what yeah. this is all about. Let's have some fun. Let's let's get people together and just, yeah, you yeah. know, thank bring you some for light. Leading the charge, man. <laughs> well, thank you. Appreciate the thank acknowledgement. Thank you for being that bright light. <laughs> no, you know, you're, you're just a trip. You're just a trip. No, I just I, I love it because you're you're a surprise package. You know, <laughs> well, I it, love that. You remember um, those grab bags you used to get and you didn't know what was inside? Yes. Well, you know it's That's hard. hard to me. It's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. <laughs> <laughs> Only you would know that. <laughs> that was fun. Um, uh, I hope I didn't just, just whatever. Um, that was fun, though, not knowing where we were going and just kind of winging it. Oh, man. No problem, no problem whatsoever. And thank you. Thank you. And thanks to everyone that tunes in. We will pick this up again in the next episode. Right on. Can't right. wait. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Listen to the Vibes. You can catch us on Buzzsprout or wherever you listen to your favourite podcasts. And on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook at The Vibes Broadcast Network and on Instagram at The Vibes Broadcast. Broadcast.